Good afternoon. Huh? Uh, today the topic is what? Chinese tradition and Buddhism, yeah? Okay. First, I'd like to talk a bit about Chinese custom and tradition uh, because there's a lot of confusion uh, about our Chinese temple. Normally, when people talk about a Chinese temple, uh, it could be a Taoist temple, uh, a Devata temple, it could be a Buddhist temple, and it could be a real Taoist temple. Uh, uh, the confusion uh, is because uh, when people go into a temple, uh, you can find a statue of Kuan Yin in a Buddhist temple, in a Taoist temple, a statue of Kuan Kong in a Buddhist temple and a Taoist temple. So people think they are all the same, especially uh, somebody from another race. Uh, and uh, Now concerning the Chinese tradition and custom, uh, firstly I like to say uh, <coughs> that the family is very important in Chinese uh, culture, unlike the uh, Japanese, uh, uh, where the country is very important or the company is very important. Uh, so, because of that, uh, it's very difficult uh, for somebody from a Chinese family uh, to become a monk. Because uh, if you become a monk, uh, then the family loses a son or a father and uh, in uh, this uh, Chinese uh, Buddhism uh, you find for example I was once a Mahayana monk a Chinese monk uh, so they used to call me Kai Fa Fa Se and uh, if you I write the name uh, it will be Shir Kai Fa yeah uh, that Shir uh, actually is the Shir Chiamoni for so it's like a surname, you know, you put your name, you have a surname. So in uh, Chinese monks, uh, they start with the shir, that means they belong to the family of the Sochiamoni for. And uh, so you have, for example, shir pu, which means a verbal father, yeah. You have a shir pong, verbal grandfather. Uh, so, yeah, all this is uh, as though it's a family, and uh, around the time of the Buddha, which is about 500 BC, yeah, in China, this uh, Ru Chiao started. Uh, Ru Chiao is Confucianism, and Confucianism uh, uh, is a uh, mixture. Uh, of Chinese uh, traditions and customs. Uh, and uh, in Ruqiao, uh, the human qualities are stress, uh, what they call rinsing. Uh, and uh, also, uh, this Ruqiao, uh, Confucianism, they talk about a good government, that good government is very important. And also, in Confucianism, uh, it's a patriarchal system. Uh, that means the men uh, are more important than the women. Uh, but one thing uh, good uh, about this uh, Confucianism uh, is that they stress on meritocracy. Uh, uh, capable people uh, should be promoted. Uh, so that's why you have this uh, examination system uh, in China where to become a government official you have to sit for uh, exams. Uh, Around the same time, uh, as Confucius, uh, we have Lao Tzu, and this Lao Tzu uh, is a bit of a recluse, uh, that's why we don't know much about him. Uh. All we know about him uh, is that he wrote a book called Tao Te Ching, and after that he, he went to cultivate himself, uh, and nobody heard about him. Uh. And this Tao Te Ching, uh, original Taoism, uh, actually is uh, quite a superior religion. He talks about Tao Te, 
virtue, no? how a person should have virtue and and to do that, uh, you have to sing, sing, uh, cultivate yourself. And uh, it talks about the natural uh, system of the whole world. Uh, so you don't have to do anything. Uh, uh, things will go naturally. Uh, that's why they talk about Wu Wei, uh, non-action. But unfortunately, uh, about 650 years after Lao Tzu, uh, this Taoism was hijacked by a man called Chang something, I forgot his full name, a Taoist, la, and he led Taoism uh, in a different direction, and he led uh, Taoism uh, to what it is today, la, where people pray to spirits, and then you have a lot of rituals, and then uh, you go into a trance, Tiao Tang, Tiu Tong, and then uh, practicing a vegetarianism, la, and healing of sickness, healing of the possessed, and all that. Uh, so, uh, Taoism uh, now has degenerated. Uh, if you go to a real Taoist temple, uh, like there is one in Jalan Gasing in PJ, uh, when you go inside that temple, you find there is no statue. No statue at all. Uh, and uh, this is original uh, Taoism. Uh, but nowadays, if you go into a Taoist temple, uh, you find a lot of ugly looking statues, yeah? With long hair, with long tongue. Uh, so when I was a young man like you, uh, or young, I uh, followed my mother to this uh, Taoist temple because uh, whenever she had problems, uh, and usually it's money problems, uh, she go to this Taoist temple to pray. Then when I went to this Taoist temple, I see all these ugly looking statues, uh, Supposed to be gods, la, but they look more like devil than eh? <laughs> other than God. And I was in a Catholic school for 12 years. And when I was in a Catholic school, I used to go to the church la, to attend the Mass. And I used to go to the chapel to pray. And then you go to the Catholic church, eh? the statues are very beautiful. Holy Mary, Jesus, all very beautiful compared to these uh, devils in the Taoist temple. Uh, so I was very turned off by all this uh, and I thought, nah, I don't want to be a Buddhist, I want to be a, a Catholic one day. Uh, now around this time uh, of the Ru Chiao and Lao Tzu, uh, Buddha uh, became enlightened in India and because China is so far from India, uh, it took about five more than 500 years, 550 years uh, before Buddhism came to China. So Buddhism came to China about 50 AD. La, Kung Yen. Uh, so when Buddhism came to China, it was brought over by Indian monks, people like Bodhidharma, Tamo, uh, Vasa. And um, because Buddhism uh, is the the principles of Buddhism are very profound. Actually, Buddhism is a very profound religion. I studied all the major religions in the world, uh, and what struck me uh, was uh, Buddhism is very difficult to understand. Uh, so it took some time for uh, me to really understand uh, the Buddha's teachings. Uh, so, the main uh, teaching in the Buddha, in the Buddha, in the Buddha's Dharma, are called the Four Noble Truths. La. And inside the Four Noble Truths, uh, the Four Noble Truths is about suffering, the cause or the arising of suffering, the seizing of suffering and the way to the seizing of suffering. This way to the seizing of suffering is called the Noble Eightfold Path. In Chinese, it's called, it's called uh, they call it? Pa Ching Tam. Uh, pa Ching Tam. So when Buddhism came to China, uh, people were already used to the Confucianism, Ru Chiao, and people were used to Taoism, Tao Chiao. So when the Indians brought this uh, Buddhism to China and it was quite difficult to understand, 
these people in China could not really accept it la, because it's like a foreign religion, Buddhism at that time uh, was a foreign re religion. La. So when the Indian monks started to teach, uh, the people could not understand, you know what they say? They say, who for pa tao? <laughs> talking nonsense, uh, talking rubbish, yeah? That's the meaning of who for pa tao. Who is, uh, how do you say, uh, while our outsiders? Uh, Shuo se la, pa tao is a pa chun tao la. Uh, so, careful la, when you say hu shuo pa tao la, talking bad about Buddhism la. <laughs> so, uh, after that, Buddhism started to flourish la, because of people like this Bodhidharma, ta mo fa se. This Bodhidharma, because he was a real practicing monk la, and uh, the Buddha's disciples, uh, actually, uh, they don't take vegetarian food. They beg for their food. Uh. So when they beg for their food, uh, they have to eat whatever is given. Yeah, They cannot choose. Uh. So Bodhidharma is one of those monks. Uh. He begged for his food. Then he spent the whole day and night uh, meditating. Uh. They said uh, he will face the wall uh, and meditate. Uh. So... Because he was such a great meditator, he had psychic powers. So because he had psychic powers, people were very impressed. So that's how Buddhism started to impress the people and started to grow. Now, uh, in the year 511, something drastic happened to Buddhism in China. At that time, the emperor was Liang Wuti, Emperor Liang Wuti. And he was a Taoist before, and he used to see uh, the Taoist priests, uh, they take vegetarian food. Uh. But Buddhist monks and nuns, uh, they beg for their food. Hami uh. Buncha, Si Ku Tao, Hami Si Ku Tao Buncha. Or the dead carcass, uh, they are eating. <laughs> so he wasn't happy, so he uh, commanded. Uh, that Buddhist monks and nuns uh, must follow the Taoists, must uh, take vegetarian food. Uh. But all along, uh, Buddhist monks have been known uh, to Sir Chai. Sir Chai, what is the meaning of Sir Chai? We, a lot of people think it's taking vegetarian food, yeah? It's not taking vegetarian food. Because the word Chai, uh, what is Kai Chai? Buka Bossa, yeah? Uh, so Chai actually means Bossa. Uh, so Buddhist monks uh, and nuns, uh, we serve chai, uh, meaning uh, we puasa. Every day we puasa. Why? Because uh, afternoon, uh, which is in Malaysia, uh, is uh, 1 p.m. From 1 p.m. until the next morning, uh, 7 a.m., uh, we puasa. We cannot eat rice. We cannot eat normal food. Only certain allowables uh, we can take. Uh. For example, I follow the Thai tradition. We can take dark chocolate. Uh, we can take uh, certain fruits uh, like uh, uh, this uh, kana, kamlam, uh, olive, uh, certain uh, medicinal fruits like this uh, yukam, uh, amla, uh, and uh, uh, certain uh, medicinal roots uh, like ginger, uh, ginseng, uh, and uh, so only certain things are allowed, uh, medicinal value. And, uh, uh. So actually Sir Chai uh, is uh, the Buddhist monk's practice. Uh, that means we don't eat from noon until the next morning dawn. Uh, yeah? mm. But after Liang Guti commanded uh, that all monks and nuns uh, must take vegetarian food, uh, so they still say uh, uh, we Sir Chai, but actually it's Sir Su. Yeah? Uh, so, Su Chai and Su Su uh, is different. Uh, Su Su is vegetarianism. Su Chai is actually a Buddhist monk. So, actually, my, like myself, I'm a Theravada monk, uh, belonging to the Thai tradition. I Su Chai. Uh, but the Chinese monks is Su Su. So, uh, that is uh, what happened. Uh. But after this was introduced, I uh, created a lot of problems for the monks. Uh, because previously, uh, monks like Bodhidharma, they beg for their food. When you beg for your food, you can go anywhere. 
Like when I was in Thailand, uh, we walk anywhere. We walk to the kampong, we go and live up the hill, we go and live in the cave. We just go every morning, make for our food, and then we get enough to eat, uh, and we go back. And we don't have to do any work. But after the monks and nuns could not uh, take meat, uh, they could not go to beg for their food because nobody will specially cook vegetarian food for you. Yeah. So once they could not uh, go and beg for their food, uh, they have to cook their own food. Yeah. Now to cook food, uh, you have to look for money. Yeah. How to get money? So they had to do chanting. Uh. So monks and nuns in China, they started to do chanting. And then they get money. But chanting is, is against the monk's precepts. The Buddha did not allow to chant for your makan. Uh. And then to keep money also is not allowed. Uh. And then uh, after that, uh, some of them, they live up the hill. Uh, and then uh, what they did was they planted vegetables. Uh. Planted vegetables. Planting vegetables also not allowed in the monk's precepts. Because the Buddha wanted the monks uh, to be like Bodhidharma. Bake for your food and spend the rest of your day and night meditating and learning the suttas, uh, the discourses of the Buddha. Uh. So, uh, this uh, became uh, the, the lifestyle of Buddhist monks and nuns in China uh, totally changed uh, after that. They began to be like Taoist priests. Uh. They do a lot of chanting, uh, they plant their vegetables and they keep money. Uh, so, uh, it was not good for, for Buddhism. Uh. Now, I'd like to say a bit uh, about the funerals. Uh, when somebody dies, uh, how certain things uh, are partly Buddhist and partly Taoist. Uh, uh. If somebody passes away, uh, uh, What happens is, uh, uh, first they keep the corpse for a few days. Uh, yeah, Sometimes they keep the corpse in the coffin for three days, sometimes for five days, for seven days. Why do they do that? Right. Because sometimes after two days, uh, you wake up. <laughs> happens many times. Sometimes even longer, after a few days or so they wake up. So to make sure uh, this person, if you bury him, uh, after two days uh, he wake up in the coffin, what happened? He sees darkness all around, he panicked. And this has happened before, you know, uh, a few years ago, about four years ago I was in, two years ago I was in Singapore. So this devotee told me uh, somewhere in Woodlands area, they clear the cemetery, they want to develop uh, not enough land in Singapore clear the cemetery. So they have to dig up the bones. Uh. So one coffin, uh, when they dug up, uh, they found uh, the coffin uh, scratch marks. Uh. The, the person inside is already dead, but the person evidently uh, woke up and found himself or herself in the coffin uh, and panic, uh, panic. So you shout as though nobody can hear. <clears throat> so the only thing to do is try to scratch, uh, scratch the, the to, to get out. So he scratched a, a lot of fingernail marks uh, on the coffin. Uh. So it's good uh, to keep for a few days, uh, make sure. Uh. But actual, actually the Buddha said uh, you can verify when a person is really dead and won't wake up. How do you verify? The Buddha said uh, when a person is really dead, uh, three things leave him. The first one is vital energy. In Chinese we say qi, your energy is gone. The second one is the consciousness stops, stops working. Okay. The third one is the body heat stops. The body heat stops. So if a person has died, you want to make sure that person is dead, you touch the corpse. If you touch, if it's cold, you won't wake up again. <laughs> but it's still warm, you huh? can wake up again. So that is a very good criterion. So uh, that is uh, why we keep so many days. Huh? Now, 
in Taoism, uh, they like to do chanting, uh, chanting to help the person. Uh, they say in, th in Taoism, they say uh, after the person has died, uh, it takes 49 days for that person to be reborn. Yeah. Mm. So they say uh, during these 49 days, that person will be roaming. We are trying to find a place to go for rebirth. So, these 49 days, they say, is very important. You have to help your relative during these 49 days. So, some of them, are they take vegetarian food. They say they want to help. And they, they make offerings. They do charity. Yeah, do charity to old folks' home, to orphanage, who yen and all that and transfer the merit to them. But actually in Buddhism, uh, we say uh, nobody can help. Uh, in Buddhism, you say, uh, it is said uh, that uh, your rebirth depends on your karma, on your actions, uh, your yip jiong, uh, your yip mm -hmm. So your karma will determine your place of rebirth. Uh. In Buddhism, we talk about five destinations of rebirth. Two are happy destinations of rebirth, uh, namely the human birth and heavenly birth. Uh, uh, and uh, three are woeful or sorrowful places of rebirth, uh, the ghost realm, the animal realm, and the hell realm. Okay. Mm. Now, in Buddhism, we say uh, that if you do very evil karma, you will go to hell. And um, if you do not so evil karma, but still quite evil karma, and your character uh, is like a gu cat, uh, you say, ngau uh, ching, then you'll be reborn as an animal. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, if you're selfish, uh, there are a lot of uh, people, uh, they don't really harm people, but selfish, uh, always. Uh, looking up your, after yourself, then you'll be reborn as a ghost. And then the, to be reborn as a human being, uh, you have to behave like a human being. Uh. The minimum uh, to behave like a human being uh, is not to harm others yeah, and to help others. Uh. Not to harm others uh, means uh, keeping your precepts. Sao kai, kolwe kai. So, if you keep your precepts, you don't kill, you don't steal, you don't commit adultery, etc. You don't cheat people, uh, then you're not harming others. Uh, uh, and then uh, on top of that, uh, if you help people uh, like uh, Bill Gates, uh, helping a lot of people, uh, this is the way uh, to either come back as a human being or go to heaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. But most people, uh, after they die, uh, where do they go? Ghost realm. <laughs> Why ghost realm? Uh, because as a human being, uh, we are much better off than animals, we are much better off than ghosts or hell beings. So every day uh, you enjoy your Kentucky chicken, uh, your internet, uh, you go to China, uh, all this, uh, you are using up your blessings. Uh, so as we use up our blessings, by the time you die, uh, your blessings is less than you brought. Yeah. <laughs> So, if your blessings is less, uh, say like uh, you need at least 50 marks uh, to become a human being. Uh. If you get 45 marks, uh, Abyss, go to <laughs> ghost realm. <laughs> if you get 25 marks, maybe you go to the animal realm. If you get 10 marks, you go to the hell realm. Uh. So, uh, it is very important uh, to have a lot of blessings. Uh, the, uh, so there's uh, um, different uh, destinations, five destinations of people. Now in uh, Taoism, uh, present day Taoism, uh, if your relative has, has died, uh, sometimes uh, this uh, what they call Lam or Lo, uh, Sai Kong, uh, they come and do chanting. And it's not cheap, you know. <laughs> I'm not two days of chanting is 20,000. Last time, one of my uh, supporters in Penang told me the neighbor died. And then the neighbor got this, uh, these people to come and do chanting. Seven days of chanting. And that was about 30 years ago, you know, 20,000. It's a big money at that time, uh, 30 years ago. So, uh, this Taoist uh, people told them, uh, 
your relative is now in the seventh heaven, seventh level of hell. So after one night of chanting, they say come up to the sixth level already. And the night of chanting, they come up to the fifth level. So after seven nights of chanting, they say come out of hell already. <laughs> but what, what evidence? Hmm? We, nobody can see, man. yeah? Uh-huh. So we, we don't believe in this. Uh-huh. When we go for rebirth, uh, it's like a prison sentence. Uh. If you are reborn as a ghost, uh, you must do your time. Uh, you have to live your lifespan as a ghost. Uh. Uh, when you finish your lifespan, then you can come up similarly for animal and all that. Uh. Now, we Chinese believe uh, that normally after your relative has died, uh, on the seventh night you come back. Yeah? <laughs> And very often they come back, but not necessarily seven nights. Sometimes after two nights, three nights, four nights, they come back. And when they come back, uh, they let you know because you can hear somebody walking uh, at night, uh, but I cannot see. Uh, sometimes the lights will come on by itself. Sometimes the window will open by itself or the door will open by itself. Yeah. Uh, so the reason they want you to know uh, is because they need your help. If a person is born in the ghost realm, uh, that ghost uh, is normally the most important thing he wants uh, is food. Uh. They are hungry, uh, they don't have enough blessings uh, to eat all the good food we have. So every night uh, the ghost will walk on the street uh, crying, uh, regret. Uh, last time I had the opportunity to practice the Dhamma, never took the opportunity to practice. Uh. So he walks on the street, what does he eat? CKCR. <laughs> the chicken, the cat, all the dirty cops. Uh. Nothing to eat, what to do? Go to the jamban. Uh, that's why when you go to a old hotel, uh, you, when you enter the jamban, uh, all the hair stand up. You go to certain old hotels uh, because uh, the ghosts like to stay there. So that's what happens now uh, when a person becomes a ghost. Uh. So for us, uh, in Buddhism, uh, we say, uh, actually the Buddha said, uh, if your relative has passed away, uh, generally it's very hard to do, very hard to help that, that relative. Uh. It's only possible to help the relative uh, if the relative is reborn as a ghost. <laughs> Why? Why only ghosts can help? Because I believe uh, only the ghosts will come back. If it's reborn in other realms, uh, it cannot come back. Only the ghost can come back. The ghost is very near to us, uh, only a different dimension. Uh, mm-hmm. So, as I said just now, uh, the most important thing the ghost need uh, is food. Uh. So, when we do offering of food, uh, we transfer the merit. Uh. And normally I tell people, say, if Sunday morning you want to do uh, charity, uh, you want to offer food, uh, Saturday night you should inform, uh, Friday night, Thursday night you should inform. Uh, you light some incense and then inform. According to the Buddha, we have a lot of relatives uh, and friends uh, in the ghost realm. We've forgotten about them, uh, but they're still there. So, last year, one of my supporters in Penang, he told me his friend, a couple, old man and old woman, at night they were sleeping, uh, about midnight they were woken up by a lot of noise in the garden. So the man asked the wife to go and see who is making the noise in the garden. So the wife went to the window and looked, uh, nobody. Then they went back to sleep. After a while, again heard a lot of noise. Again she went to see. Uh, Nobody. And then suddenly she thought, nah, I look at the CCTV. When she went to the see the CCTV, she saw an old woman sitting out there. She was surprised. Nah. I went to look at the window again. Nah. Nobody. Went to see the CCTV, got an old lady there. Nah. And slowly they realized nah, it's a being nah, that normal eyes cannot see. Nah. So the next day they went to ask uh, this uh, Taoist temple. Nah. This but uh, you told me, and then uh, the person said, "What? Well, you know, the person said, uh, this old lady, this ghost, uh, is your wife's former Lai Ma, nanny, uh, nanny from the past life. Uh, so last time the nanny, uh, the maid uh, who looks after the baby, uh, 
they give milk to the baby, mm. but they are not married. So after that, that maid died, nah, she got no children to help her, and she's reborn as a ghost. So she's very hungry, yeah, and she's thinking, who can help me? Yeah? Then she remembered this baby. Last time to, he used to give her milk, yeah? surely she will help me. So you see, past life, how do we remember? We don't remember. Yeah? But when they are very, when they are suffering, yeah, they come to you for help. That's why some people see ghosts. Some people dream of ghosts. Yeah? So these ghosts uh, are related to you uh, in the past, uh, you already forgotten. That's why it's good uh, when we do any charity and uh, transfer the merit to them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in uh, Chinese funerals, uh, they like to burn paper money. Why? Because uh, in Taoism, uh, they believe uh, 49 days uh, after that person died, uh, what I'm telling you is from the Wikipedia. <laughs> because different people might have different interpretation, yeah? So, this 49 days uh, where that person is, that, that, that dead person uh, is supposed to go for rebirth, uh, during these 49 days, uh, the ghost will try to pull him to the ghost realm. The animal will try to pull him to the animal realm. The hell beings will try to pull him to the hell realm, yeah? Uh, so we don't want that to happen. So our Chinese thinking, uh, we burn paper money. And you notice, uh, when they burn paper money, and they burn the whole day on, uh, and the whole night, uh, they keep on burning. Yeah? Why? Because the idea is that this paper money will go into the other world, and then the greedy ghost uh, will go and grab the money. The greedy animal spirit will go and grab the money, and they have no time to disturb your relative. Uh, uh, then your relative can find a good reward uh, to human rebirth or to heaven. Uh, so this is the thinking, uh, they keep on burning paper money. Uh. But uh, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, uh, only two births, uh, two types of birth, uh, you have to wait. Uh. And these two types of births uh, is uh, human birth and animal birth. Because human and animal, uh, you have to be go into the womb. Yeah? To go into the womb, you have to wait for the mother and father to come together and the mother is in the right season and then only uh, the egg is fertilized, then only the, the uh, spirit uh, can go into the womb. For heavenly birth is instantaneous, for ghost rebirth also is instantaneous and uh, for hell also is instantaneous. In fact, in the Buddha's discourse, uh, it is said uh, that if your karma is so bad, uh, your yip chiong, uh, your gyap uh, is so bad uh, that you have to go to hell uh, and the hell beings will come up and drag you down to hell. Uh, so that's why in Chinese we talk of wu tao bè bin, nao tao ma min. And it's very strange, one of my supporters told me uh, the father actually saw a few days before the father died. Uh, at night he was eating his rice, uh, he saw this Ngao Tao Ma Min waiting at the door. Very frightening. Huh? So, uh, this is... Uh, now, after a person dies, uh, you... Uh, just now that paper money, uh, but nowadays, uh, last time they used to burn the paper money. Now we are very modern now, uh, we want to burn the Mercedes Benz, we want to burn the house. <laughs> Credit card. <laughs> okay, what is this trance? You know, in, in Chinese temple, uh, people go into a trance, uh, possessed by the spirit. Tiao Tang, Tiu Tong. What happens? A lot of uh, people who believe in Taoism, uh, they will say the Xin Lai Liang, San Lei Jiao. So they say the, the spirit, the, the the deva enter the body, yeah? Uh, you think so easy for the deva to enter the body? Yeah? Uh, suppose you leave your telephone, you ask the Prime Minister to come. <laughs> Will he come? The deva is higher than a human being, isn't it? Why should he listen to you and come into your smelly body? Full of shit, full of urine, full of blood. So who wants to come? 
the goals, goals we want to come. Because uh, the goals uh, last time uh, when he had a human body, uh, he had a good life. Now uh, he said a very sorrowful life, nothing to eat. Yeah. So you allow him to come into a human body, uh, the goals will quickly come. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so most of these uh, are low spirits. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not really deva. Sometimes have you heard certain ladies, uh, ladies are uh, possessed uh, by a spirit, and then they they go into trance and they help people. Uh, hear people's sickness and all that. Yeah. Why? Why does a ghost want to do that? Because if you are reborn as a ghost uh, and you are suffering, uh, then you realize uh, I, uh, I don't have enough blessings, uh, don't have enough counter. That's why today I am born as a ghost. So I need the counter uh, to be reborn as a human being or in heaven. So when this ghost realizes uh, that he needs this uh, Kungta, uh, he possess somebody uh, to help people. So when he help people, uh, he get the blessings, uh, so he can come out of the ghost realm faster. Uh, that's why some people get possessed. Uh. So these these spirits, uh, they actually do help people. Uh. One other thing I like to say uh, is this Feng Sui, Hong Sui. This Hong Sui, yeah. Uh, from China, it came and uh, basically it's two words la. Fong and Sui la. Hong ka chui la. Mm. Hong is wind, Chui is water. Why are these two elements so important in China? Because uh, in China, you get the northern wind. La. Northern wind is very cold. Yeah. Uh, so if you build your house, uh, it's very foolish uh, if you make your main door uh, facing the north. If your main door is facing the north, uh, the cold wind will come to your house. Yeah. Uh, so in, in China, if you build a house, your main door uh, should be facing the south. So you don't get a lot of cold air. Yeah. And then why is the water so important? Because once a year, uh, the Yellow River in China uh, gets flooded. And when it gets flooded, uh, a lot of houses are flooded, you know, something like Lantan last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you want to build a house, uh, you also want to build on higher ground. Yeah. Uh, so these two are very important, Hong Kachui. Mm -hmm. So like last time I went to America to become a monk. In America, even in America, they build this Chinese temple, uh, they still put the door uh, facing the south. <laughs> but in America it's not important, isn't it? Why must the door face the south? <laughs> so it's uh, this tradition. Uh, mm. And from there uh, they say feng shui is important and they do all kinds of things uh, to give you the good feng shui. Uh. Mm. But actually feng shui uh, doesn't really help uh, in, in Buddhism. What, what is important in Buddhism is your karma. If your karma is good, uh, you can overcome a lot of obstacles. Uh. That's why you see like in Thailand, uh, there are some practicing monks. Uh, they are very serious practi practicing monks. Uh, they are very virtuous. They keep their sila, they beg for their food. They don't accept money. They go into the deep forest to, to meditate. And you go into the deep forest, uh, you got tiger, you got ghosts, you got uh, fierce spirits. Uh, but they are not harmed. Because these spirits, uh, kui wu, kui wu kui tong, uh, sin no sin tong. Yeah. Uh, so the devas uh, have psychic power, the ghosts also have psychic power. So if somebody comes into the territory and uh, they read your mind, when they read your mind, they know what type of person you are. So if you are, you are a person with a very, uh, very little blessings, uh, they, don't, they are not afraid to kill you, because if they kill you, uh, you become a ghost. Only. Yeah. But if you have a lot of blessings, uh, if they kill you, uh, you become a huge deva. And then uh, you sin so. <laughs> so they, they, they don't harm you uh, if you have a lot of good blessings. Uh, that's why these monks can go into the deep forest. Uh. The other thing I like to mention is this jiwa, chawa, mantra. 
mantras, although nowadays uh, it is practiced in Buddhism, uh, it was not taught by the, by the Buddha. Uh. Mantras come from Brahmanism, Hinduism, and mantras, uh, jiva or chowa, are very powerful words. Uh. They don't have a meaning, uh, but when you recite the mantra, uh, certain spirits come. I used to practice, uh, so I know. Uh, this fear spirit sometimes will come. Uh. So these mantras are very powerful uh, in the sense that uh, you can do things uh, that normally you cannot do. Uh. Uh, so in India they have a lot of these things. And uh, I always say uh, they use mantra to create black magic. They do black magic. Uh. Uh, so they do black magic, they use mantra. To overcome the black magic, they also use mantra, another mantra. And then to keep spirits and ghosts, they also use the mantra to control the spirit. So you find uh, wherever Hinduism went, uh, in, for example, Southeast Asia, Hinduism came to Indonesia, came to Thailand, came to Cambodia, came to Malaya. What happened as a result? All these countries got what? In common, black magic, Kong Tao. Because of these mantras. So mantras are very powerful. And uh, we don't want to play with mantras because uh, everything uh, has a price. You use something, uh, you have to pay back. Okay, now I say a bit about the basic teachings of the Buddha. In the, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, the principle of Kama Vipaka in Koa, in Koa is very important because all our lives uh, are governed by Kama Vipaka. Kama Vipaka basically means uh, whatever Kama you do, uh, you will reap a Vipaka. Kama is the intentional action that you do. If you do something intentionally, yeah, there is a result. The result is called the vipaka. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, if you hurt somebody, you will suffer for it. If you help somebody, you will be rewarded for it. Uh, so, the Buddha said uh, there are ten types of evil karma you should not do because you will suffer. Three is concerned with the body. The three evils you can do with your body uh, is to kill, uh, kill somebody to steal, uh, to commit adultery. Uh, these are the three evil karma you can do with the body. And then four evil karma you can do with your mouth uh, is to lie. You lie, for example, to cheat people. Yeah? Uh, and the second verbal evil karma is to carry tales. Uh, you hear A talking about B, talking bad about B. Uh, tomorrow you go and tell B, hey, last night A said this, this, this about you. And you cause A and B to quarrel and fight. Yeah? Uh, this is the second one. The third one is uh, using vulgar language, using coarse language, always talking very roughly. Uh, the fourth one is uh, speaking uh, gossip, idle gossip, uh, survey, uh, idle gossip. So these are the four verbal karma. And then the mental karma, three types. One is uh, over greedy. Uh, some people are over greedy. Second one is anger, a lot of anger. The third one is uh, wrong view. Wrong view means uh, you don't believe in karma vipaka. Mm. Uh, you don't believe uh, that after you die, there are planes of rebirth. Uh, and you don't believe that there are holy men. Uh, uh, so this is wrong view. Uh, so these ten evil karmas, I uh, have to be very careful. Uh, don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery, uh, don't lie or cheat people, uh, don't carry tales to cause disharmony, uh, don't speak vulgar, coarse language, uh, then don't engage in idle gossip. Uh, and then the mental one, you have to change your character, uh, you control your greed, control your anger, and then learn the Dhamma so that you can get right view. Uh, now, uh, in the suttas, uh, somebody asked the Buddha, why is it uh, in this world, uh, some people are born beautiful, some people are born ugly, 
Some people are born intelligent, some people are born stupid. Some people uh, are very strong, like these footballers, uh, uh, these Olympic uh, people who take part in Olympics, uh, so fit. Uh, and some people are very sickly, the whole life are so sickly. Uh, and why some people have long lives, some people have short life. Sometimes you see a child, like two years old, three years old, get cancer. Yeah, why? Uh, so the Buddha said it's because of past life. Past life. If you kill in the past life, uh, as I mentioned the first precept, uh, if you kill, you will get a short life. Uh, because you make other beings have short life, you will get short life in return. That's why some children, so young, they get cancer and die. And then, uh, if you steal, uh, if you steal, or you constantly steal, uh, people like to steal from you. So next time you become a boss, uh, and then your workers like to steal your things. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, if you commit adultery, uh, and you might be reborn as an animal, uh, be behaving like an animal. And then not only get reborn as an animal, you might get castrated also. Uh, and then uh, also people may hate you uh, because you break up families uh, if you commit adultery. Uh, and then uh, why are some people born intelligent? Uh, the Buddha said uh, because that person, uh, when he doesn't know something, uh, he will inquire, he will investigate, he will try to find out. Uh, don't be like some people, you don't know something, you pretend you, you know everything. So you take the trouble to investigate, find out, huh? then you become smarter, huh? so you are born intelligent. And why are some people born sickly? Huh? Because huh, they hurt other beings, huh? they physically harm other beings. Huh? If you make other beings huh, suffer, their body painful, huh? next time you come back, your body is always painful. Huh? But if you don't harm others, huh, then you'll be very fit, huh? uh, very strong. Huh? And uh, why are some people born into a wealthy family? Because uh, they are generous, they like to help other people. Uh, so you are, you are generous, you like to help other people, uh, then generosity comes back to you. Uh, people like to help you also. Uh, uh, but we say, Ulang Yen, Yao Yen Yin. And uh, why see some people, uh, what else, are born ugly? Because of bad temper. If you have a bad temper, huh, you're always angry. Huh? How does your face look like? An angry face, is it a beautiful face? It's not a beautiful face, a sour face. Huh? Uh, so you always make your, your face uh, like that, huh? then you'll be born ugly. Huh? But if a person has no temper, anything huh, people say, yeah, I just smile, uh, then you're born mukamanis. Huh? Yeah? Uh, so that is... Uh, now, the Buddha also said, uh, what we want, uh, we have to work for it. You have to do the right thing. Prayers will not help you. However much you pray, uh, you won't get what you want. You make vows or so, you won't get what you want. You think of it every day or so, you won't get what you want. Simple example, suppose now you want to do well in your exam. You can pray to what? Kwan Kong, Tua Pek Kong. Can you help? Huh? Pray the Buddha also, you cannot help. Mm. So, what do you have to do? You have to study, isn't it? Uh, the right thing to do is to spend a lot of hours studying, uh, make the effort. Then, if you are intelligent, uh, then uh, you will get good results. You notice here, first one uh, is you work hard. Work hard is present life karma. Okay? And then the other thing that is helping you uh, is you are born intelligent. Born intelligent is previous life karma. So you have previous life karma helping you and you put effort this life karma then you get what you want. Yeah? Mm. So the Buddha gave uh, some very good examples. Uh. The Buddha said, suppose a man uh, wanted to make oil, uh, so he gets some sesame seed, uh, uh, chima. Okay. Then he grind the uh, crush the uh, chima. Uh. Then he get oil, isn't it? But somebody who doesn't know, uh, he also wants to get oil. From far, he sees this fellow grinding the chima. He thought it's sand. So he gets sand. Then he grinds the chima. Can he get? Can he get oil? He cannot get oil. Suppose he makes a vow. Can he get oil? He cannot make oil. He prays to heaven for the oil. Can he get? 
can be because he's not doing the right thing, yeah. But if you are doing the right thing, you don't have to pray, you don't have to make vows, huh? you will get, yeah. Uh, similarly, the Buddha said, suppose a person wanted to make uh, butter, so he gets milk, huh? and he churns the milk, huh? keep churning the milk. After some time, the milk will turn to butter, yeah. Uh, whether he makes a vow, he will get butter, he doesn't make a vow, so he'll get butter. He prays, so he gets butter, he doesn't pray, so he gets butter. So actually, the praying and the vows huh, is not in the equation not relevant, yeah? Uh. Now, the, another person, he wants to make butter, what does he do? He takes water and he keeps stirring the water. Will the water turn into butter? No. Makes a vow also he cannot get. Pray to heaven also cannot get, yeah? Uh. So, it is not by prayers, not by vows that you get what you want. You have to do the right thing. And the right thing, uh, you have to have the wisdom to know what is the right thing. Uh. So, uh, okay, and then the last thing is the Buddha said, uh, uh, the most important Dhamma that he teaches uh, is the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths, the first one is suffering, uh, saying, uh, meaning uh, that existence uh, doesn't matter whether we are a human being or an animal or a ghost or a deva. We experience suffering. Why? Because of impermanence. Because of impermanence. Eh? There are certain things that we like, uh, certain people that we love. But because of impermanence, eh, we have to be separated from the people you love. You have to be separated from the things that you like. Yeah. So it gives us suffering. Mm. So a lot of us, eh, especially when you are young, eh, you don't see suffering. But suppose one day the doctor tells you, hey, you have terminal cancer. You got six months more to live. Uh, when the doctor tells you uh, you have six months more to live, uh, then you really see impermanence. And when you see impermanence, uh, you see suffering. Yeah. Mm. So that's the first uh, thing uh, about this whole noble truth. The second thing uh, is the cause of suffering uh, is because we are reborn again and again into the world. Yeah. And we are reborn again and again to the world because of craving. There are certain things that we like in the world uh, and we like to cling to it. Yeah, Whatever you like, you like to cling to it. And because you cling to it, uh, uh, that gives you that, that energy uh, to come back again and again to the world. Uh. And then the uh, ending of suffering uh, is letting go, uh, letting go of this attachment that makes you turn on the wheel of samsara. And then the last one is uh, the way, uh, is the four, is the Noble Eightfold Path, Path and Tao, uh, is the way the Buddha taught uh, that will bring you out of the round of rebirths. Uh. Alright, now it's a Q&A session, so please don't be shy to um, ask questions, um, to ask Sandy some questions. And remember the pieces of paper to use you on Friday. Yeah, um, if you see, feel shy to ask questions, you may write a question on the piece of paper and there are helpers uh, around to collect your uh, questions. In the meantime, I'd just like to say something. <coughs> That's how I mentioned uh, that the Buddha's teachings uh, is very profound, very deep. Uh, and one of the things that the Buddha said uh, is that the world uh, is created by consciousness. Uh, although we see the world is so real, uh, it's only as real as your dream. When you are dreaming at night, uh, do you do you, do you know that it's a dream? You don't know, isn't it? Yeah? You don't realize it's a dream. Only when you wake up, only, yeah, then you tell yourself, oh, yeah, just now why I was so frightened. Uh, I had a nightmare. Uh, it's only a dream. And that's only when you wake up. But if you don't wake up, uh, it will still be real to you. So life is just like that now. Uh, so. The fact that the Buddha said uh, the world is created by consciousness uh, means uh, consciousness uh, 
is making a show of this world. And we think uh, that the world is so real because we can see it, our eyes can see the world, our ears can hear, our nose can smell, our tongue can taste and our body can touch. Yeah? Yeah. So, now, is it really your eyes seeing the world? I say it's not your eyes seeing the world because uh, it is really your eyes that see the world. Uh, I do a quick operation, I take out your two eyes, uh, put the two eyes on the table, and ask your eyes to see, and the eyes see. The eyes is just like your spectacles, yeah? It's only helping you to see, but it is not the one that is really seeing. But at night when you are dreaming, uh, and you are not using your eyes, your eyes are closed, and you see another world, it's as real as now, yeah? Uh, now, in your dream, uh, you are not using your eyes, ma. how is it you see? Yeah? It's the consciousness that makes you see. It's not your eyes that make you see. Mm. So similarly, yeah, in your dream, uh, sometimes like somebody says, suppose you have a dream and somebody slaps you. You really feel the slap, isn't it? <laughs> yeah? Uh. So sometimes in your dream also you see colors. Uh, so it's just as real as now. Mm. And this is what now, uh, quantum physics uh, is slowly saying that it's actually consciousness that creates the world. That's why quantum physics says, uh, if I look at the wall, uh, it is real as far as I'm concerned. If I look away from the wall, uh, it does not exist at all. And you know, a set of possibilities, yeah, quantum physics says. Uh, so, now, uh, uh, slowly, uh, you go on YouTube, you find a lot of lectures uh, in various, from various universities. Uh, the doctors are talking about consciousness. <clears throat> now that I have this knowledge to differentiate between Buddhism and Taoism, do I enlighten my family to practice Taoism seriously and at times blindly? It's young, we forgot to bring down the books. Uh. Yes, can somebody help help him go and bring the books? Uh, uh. So this one, uh, you know, if you try to enlighten your family uh, seriously, uh, the problem is they may not believe you. La. So you have to do it slowly, la, in stages by stages. La. Our family members are the most difficult to teach la, because they have always seen you as a young person la, and uh, they think they know more than you. La. What is karma? Is karma effect on future life or is it cause of the past life? How to stop karma? Karma is action, intentional action, and we are creating karma every day, especially as human beings. Eh? We do a lot of things eh, purposely, so we cannot stop karma. Mm. And then uh, the karma that we experience now eh, is the effect of the past life. Eh? But we can change our life because at the moment we are also creating karma. Yeah. I just now I, I mentioned uh, to get good results in your in your exam, uh, you're being born intelligent uh, is good karma from the past helping you. Yeah, but if you are lazy, uh, then you are not helping yourself. Uh, you are not producing the good karma this life. Uh, so uh, you will not get the, the desired results. Lah, uh, is getting A in all your subjects. Yeah, uh, so you got to have good karma helping you plus. Present life karma. Present life karma is to make the effort. Okay? What is the difference between the mantras in Mahayana teaching and the mantras in Chinese tradition? Uh, what do you mean by Chinese tradition? You mean Taoism probably. Uh, Taoism also, they have their mantras. Mahayana, Mahayana mantras come from India because uh, Mahayana Buddhism came from India. We are called Theravada. Sometimes they call us uh, Xiao Cheng. Uh, we are not Xiao Cheng. <laughs> we are Nan Chuan. Uh, Nan Chuan, Pei Chuan. Uh, so, uh, 
the Mahayana mantras come from India, which comes from Brahmanism, you can say Hinduism. Chinese mantras uh, probably originate from, originate from China. Uh, how does one practice this attachment? Uh, letting go, uh, letting go, to practice letting go, uh, you have to study the Buddha's words. Uh. Sometimes we study the Buddha's words, we know what to do, uh, but we cannot do it uh, because our mind is not strong. Yeah, uh, like Just like a drug, ad drug addict. Uh. The drug addict, after some time, uh, he's suffering uh, and he knows that he's suffering, but he wants to kick the habit, he cannot kick. Why? Because his mind is not strong. Yeah. Uh, so how to make the mind strong? Meditation. Uh, now in uh, America, meditation is becoming more and more popular because now they are proving uh, that meditation can cure a lot of sickness. A lot of our sickness is mind made. Mm -hmm. So if we meditate, uh, we calm the mind uh, uh, and it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. So you have to to practice letting go, uh, you have to study the Buddha's words, meditate, and then when you understand and you have the strength of mind, you can let go. Uh. How to get the wisdom to do the right thing? Uh. Uh, also basically the same, uh, you have to listen to the Buddha because the Buddha is the wisest man in the world. Uh. And then he gives you a lot of good advice. Uh. And then uh, you meditate to get the strength of mind, and then uh, you will do the right thing. Uh. Some believe that ghosts are able to come to disturb or pull out the soul of humans when they are asleep, when they are sleeping. Is this true and why does it happen? Um, not really pull out the soul. Uh, but the uh, ghosts can come and disturb you. Uh, you know there's a saying, birds of the same feather flock together. Yeah. So, if your mind uh, is very scattered, jinyas so osan, some osan. So you are like the ghost. So the ghost like to be your friend. So that's why uh, we have to uh, keep our mind peaceful. Don't be so scattered brain. You are a scattered brain. Then. Uh, when you pass away, you'll be reborn as a ghost. So the ghost is thinking, ah, wow, this one can be my girlfriend ah, if he dies. So the ghost can can harm you ah, and kill you ah, and you become his girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, so if you uh, have good blessings, ah, then ah, they won't harm you because ah, you won't be reborn as a ghost. Yeah. Uh, that's why I said, ah, then uh, blessings is very important. How to get blessings? Three stages. Dana, Sila, Bhavana. Dana is uh, Pu uh, Sila is So uh, uh, And uh, Bhavana is Yu Sing. Uh, so Dana is helping other people, uh, charity. Uh, be kind to other people. Help as many beings as you can. Uh, whoever needs your help. Uh, don't be selfish. La. Help. La. So the first one. And then the second one is Sila. Sila is keeping your precepts so that uh, you don't harm others. La. You don't kill. You don't steal. You don't commit adultery. Uh, you don't lie. I put there. Paul put here. Paul put here. Take out one. Put them back. So, uh, this tool is not too difficult to practice. La. Uh, pu -se and so -chie. So -chie. Pu -se is the easiest. That's why a lot of people like to do. But because it's the easiest, uh, the blessings uh, is the least. La. The counter is the least. La. Mm. <coughs> Harder to do uh, is so -chie. Uh, you cannot kill, you cannot steal, you cannot commit adultery, you cannot lie. Uh, this is more difficult. So the uh, counter uh, is higher. Mm, the blessings is higher. And then the last one, Siu Sing, uh, is more difficult to do. Siu Sing actually basically means uh, Siu Sing Wei. Uh, 
แก้ด้วยเซิงแกะด้วยด้วยด้วยเองอุยอ่ะนะอืม so that means change your character change your mind that means ah uh, uh, for this ah uh, Xiu Xing ah uh, you got to study the Buddha's words listen to the Buddha's words secondly you meditate to get get strength of mind and then thirdly you always look into your own faults uh, see whether you have a lot of greed whether you have a lot of anger uh, whether you have a lot of jealousy etc uh, so you change your character Because the Buddha said, "Nah, if you want to be reborn in heaven, nah, now you got to become like a dewa or a dewi. You want to be be reborn in heaven, but you go care, ah, now change, ah, how to be reborn in heaven? Yeah. Uh, so it is your character that brings you, ah, to the type of rebirth. So these three things, ah, pusa, ah, sochie, and siu sing." What are the differences of Mahayana and Hinayana? Uh, it's not Hinayana; it's Theravada. Mahayana and Theravada. Nan Chuan is called Theravada. Uh, so these uh, Mahayanis, uh, they like to call Theravada as Hinayana. Uh, they like to call uh, us uh, as uh, Xiao Cheng. Uh, but we are practicing original Buddhism. Mahayana started 500 years after the Buddha passed away, uh, and you find uh, Mahayana books uh, always talk about Ta Cheng Xiao Cheng Ta Cheng Xiao Cheng. Yeah, this never existed during the Buddha's time. After 500 years after the Buddha's passing away, uh, then the Sangha, the monks, uh, split uh, split into different groups, and because they split into different groups, uh, they Uh, call themselves Da Cheng, and then uh, the other one is Theravada, is Chang Lao Pai, Sang Chuo Pu, is actually Chang Lao Pai. Thera is Chang Lao. Uh, so, uh, so all this uh, uh, happened after 500 years. That's why the Mahayana books, uh, all the Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing, Hua Yan Jing, all this uh, is uh, after 500 years. Our early Earliest uh, original discourses of the Buddha, uh, the Buddha said, uh, "His two dharma will last five hundred years, because uh, after five hundred years, the Buddha foresaw uh, that he will be polluted uh, with later books. Uh. So during these five hundred years, uh, we want to know uh, what actually is the Buddha's dharma. Luckily, we had Emperor Asoka, Ai Wang, uh, who lived uh, about two hundred and fifty years after the Buddha's passing away." And he was a king uh, who had a lot of respect uh, and veneration for the Buddha. So he built these Asoka pillars, uh, pillars which are about this uh, round pillars, about this wide, uh, two feet. Uh, so he put uh, every like kilometer in the along the road, uh, every one kilometer. He put these uh, stone pillars, uh, and he got his men uh, to carve out the words of the Buddha on the stone pillars. Now after so long, uh, they dig up. These Asoka pillars, ah, uh, they find during Emperor Asoka's time, ah, uh, the Buddha's dharma consisted of five nikayas, Upu, Diga nikaya is Changpu, Majima nikaya is Chongpu, uh, Sangyuta nikaya is Xiangyingpu, Angutra nikaya is Chengchepu, and uh, Kudaka nikaya is Xiaopu. So these Pali suttas uh, are the original words of the Buddha. And after 500 years, uh, other monks started to write the books, like Mahayana books, lah. Uh, you know, for Yan Hua Ching and Hua Yan Ching and all this, lah. Uh, mm. Leng Yan Ching and all that. Uh. So uh, even in Theravada Buddhism, also we have some later books like Visuddhi Maga, Ching Ching Tao Lun, uh, that also appeared uh, 900 years after the Buddha's passing away. So all these are not reliable. What is reliable is the early Pali suttas. Uh, because uh, the earlier suttas uh, were in Pali, uh, uh. so the differences between Mahayana and Theravada there are many differences. Uh. Basically, uh, uh, Mahayana teach uh, that you can pray for help, uh, uh, that Omitofo will help you, Kuan uh, Yin Pusa will help you, and all that. Uh. But in original Buddhism, nobody can help you. Your karma, your karma is the one that decides. Your good karma will help you. Your evil karma will curse you. Uh, so you decide what you want to do. 
Many Buddhists have statues of Buddha, of Panyin, etc. at home. They believe that the goddess sometimes come and visit. Uh, this is not true. Uh. Actually, during the Buddha's time, there were no statues. Mm. And the Buddha is very accurate. The Buddha predicted his true Dharma will last 500 years. Exactly 500 years after the Buddha passed on, uh, then statu statues started to appear. The first, was in, the first one was in Gandhara in North West India, and they started to make statues. So actually the Buddha want us to swear for, but now these people pay for. <laughs> pay for is no use. If the chicken already killed by the seller, then we buy and eat. That also count as kill? No. This, uh, the Buddha said, uh, there is a type of meat uh, you can eat and there is a type of meat that you should not eat. Uh, the type of meat you should not eat uh, is the type uh, where you see, you hear and you suspect uh, that it was purposely killed for you, only killed for you, uh, then you must not eat. Uh. So, for example, you cannot go to a restaurant uh, and choose a live fish uh, and ask them to cook for you. No. But if the fish is already dead, uh, then uh, it's different because you are eating the carcass and not eating the live fish. Uh, uh, so, can't see. Uh. Huh? Oh, okay. So, uh, so we, if you want to eat meat, uh, you, it must be dead meat. Uh. It's not live meat. If someone talks bad about Buddhism, what should we do? Should we stop them? If we don't stop them, it might cause them to get bad karma. Um, yeah. If people want to talk bad, nah, they can't do much. Nah. But uh, you just tell them nah, that you are ignorant. Nah. You don't know much about the Buddha's teachings. If you know, nah, you won't be, won't be talking like that. Because uh, now uh, scientists, quantum physicists and all that nah, are verifying exactly what the Buddha said. Any other question? Uh, is there any... Uh, because sometimes when we try to uh, convince our friends that Buddhism is a, is a good subject, you should come and take a look at it. But sometimes we can't find a proper way to do so. Is there any way you can suggest to such a I guess maybe it's because you don't know enough of Buddhism. <laughs> if you know enough, huh, then uh, you can tell that person. So, a lot of people, uh, uh, we know a little bit uh, about Buddhism, but uh, it's not enough to convince people. Uh. But the other thing is, uh, we show by example. Uh, if you say uh, your religion is so good and so good, but your behavior is no good, uh, nobody will have faith. But if your behavior is good, uh, you show by good example, uh, people will, will be impressed. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually because uh, both of the minds, uh, when you try to go into stuff related to religion, they will start to repel. Uh, how, how to be, uh, make the situation does not seem to be awkward to them. Then, 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 uh, sometimes, uh, we can talk in terms of common sense. Uh, don't bring in religion. Like nowadays, uh, there is a type of meditation called Goenka Vipassana, Vipassana meditation, uh, where they don't say that it is Buddhist meditation. So because they don't say that it is Buddhist meditation, uh, people from other religions, uh, they join. Uh, so for example, talking about rebirth, uh, you don't have to say uh, that uh, it is uh, Buddhist teaching. You can uh, uh, bring bring out uh, certain instances. Uh, some children are born uh, where from very young uh, they know music. And certain children from very young they know certain languages that the parents never taught them. Mm. 
So some of this, uh, and some children, they remember their past life. So these, these things, uh, no need to bring in religion, uh, just use common sense. Uh. Is it possible that we get enlightenment if we are practicing uh, Mahayana rather than Theravada? Uh, the, you see, uh, in the Pachin Tao, Noble Eightfold Path, uh, the Buddha said uh, to practice the Noble Eightfold Path, you have to get the first factor, which is right view, uh, Zheng Jian. And to get Zheng Jian, uh, uh, there are two conditions. One is the voice of another teaching you the real, the, the true Dhamma. Sat Dhamma is the true Dhamma. Uh, and then uh, you have Ruli Se Wei. Uh, you have focused attention. Uh, so this true Dhamma is very important. This true Dhamma is the original Dhamma of the Buddha. If you don't have the original Dhamma of the Buddha and understand it well, uh, even though you practice very hard, na, at the most you become like a Hindu yogi. Some of these Hindu yogis, uh, they have psychic power. They can fly, they can go through the wall and all that. But you cannot find among them uh, any Arya. You cannot find even the lowest Arya, the first fruit, uh, first part or first fruit. Uh. So, the, even somebody like uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, to me, uh, was a Hindu yogi because he was missing for 12 years or something like that. He must have gone to India where he practiced uh, as a yogi uh, because uh, uh, certain things uh, that he said uh, uh, comes from Hinduism. For example, he said God is three. God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and God the Father. It's a Hindu concept. The Hindus say uh, every being uh, has three bodies, the physical flesh body, the astral body and the super consciousness, the mind. So, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he attained the jhanas, chanting. That's why he had psychic powers. He could walk on the water. But he had only one or two psychic powers compared to the Buddha. Buddha had many psychic powers. Uh. If you're all uh, interested in to know more about Buddhism, you're welcome to come to our Vihara. It's not too far from here. And uh, sometimes people come for retreat. I think next month there's a group of uh, University of Jakarta students, about 40 of them want to come for five days, I think. Mm. So you're, uh, anytime you want to find out more, uh, we have books, we have CDs and all that in English, in Hokkien, in Cantonese.